Hello there, friends. Welcome to BJJ Meditations. This is BJJ Meditations number 31. I'm your host, Joe Hannon. I uh, have a lot I want to talk about today. Some of it relating to jujitsu, some of it relating to the meta game, the meta jujitsu, which is life. So I'm just going to get right into things. Uh, first, to kind of set the stage for you this week, I want to read to you a small portion of an essay I wrote two, almost two years ago now called The Idea of You. And The Idea of You was about my anticipation of becoming a new father and what that might mean to be responsible for raising a son jointly with my wife and what that might mean within the context of the world as it's evolving and unfolding. And this particular essay comes from, let's see, which installment this is. This is part three. So it's month eight of uh, my son's gestation. And it's germane to current events that are unfolding right now in at least the eastern part of the U.S. and certainly the central part of the U.S. and the West. So I want to revisit it and you'll see where I'm going with this. Month eight. High summer. Torrential rains. Tornadoes. What kind of world are your mother and I bringing you into? A violent storm hit while I was training jujitsu, bringing several tornadoes with it. Your mother told me to stay at the gym, but I drove through the flood to get home to her and you. We huddled in the basement and waited for the end amid high stakes and high water. The same thing would happen again during your first week at home. Earlier in the summer, Before the immediate cost of climate change became so hard to ignore, you went to LVI. You went to Cape May. You got a taste of the fish that Jean and I pulled from the waves each morning and brought back for breakfast. The keeper weak fish were gone. So were the keeper flounder. In the quiet dawn and lapping surf, I wondered if you and I would fish together for the first time. Then a sandbar shark's fin severed the shallow water. I took a few steps back to dry sand in disbelief. Gina and I fished again the next morning, and so did the shark. So yeah, we're living in strange times, but times that many have predicted and indicated. Um, It's undeniable here that summer in New Jersey is not what it once was when I was a kid. So we're talking as few as 30 years ago. Uh, winter is not what it once was here when I was a kid. I grew up in the northern part of the state. I was actually on our, our high school had a ski team. And uh, frequently we had snowfall amounts that would close school down and certainly keep uh, the local ski hill covered for the duration of winter. And that doesn't really seem to happen anymore. And I've been reading uh, Wybon Trainard, the CEO of Patagonia, his book, Let, Me, Let My People Go Surfing. And it's prompted a lot of reflections, not just about climate change, but also about what it means to found a company and run a company from a first principles perspective. And, you know, I, I, why Vaughn seems to think that there is no crisis other than the environmental crisis. And I could certainly see that framework and appreciate it, uh, I saw it two years ago when my son was born and this sheer terror was sweeping over me of what, what will my son's life look like? You know, what will the next 100 years on earth look like? I'm feeling it again in a big way this summer as we had these torrential rains pass through upper upstate New York and Vermont. Uh, and as we had this heat dome that's settling once again over the West and the Southwest. Uh, I have friends out in Colorado who, you know, have real concerns about when their water supply is going to run out. Uh, It's getting harder and harder to ignore the environmental crisis, but I tend to think that the environmental crisis is really a crisis that's kind of nested within this meta crisis, which is something that John Verveke and the folks at the STOA have talked about uh, quite a bit. It's this inability to reason. It's this uh, inability to kind of see past our tribal mentality, to see past our prior beliefs, uh, to really question our own mental models and reassess and reassemble them. Um, So I'm not sure which of these things I'm all in on or if I'm all in on anything, but I say this to say that BJJ Meditations is quickly becoming something bigger than I had envisioned. And 
you all, there aren't a ton of you, but for those of you who do listen to this podcast, you're very attentive and you're very thoughtful people. Um, and you're very motivated, it seems, not just to train this martial art as a way of learning a martial art, but training it as a way of understanding how we learn and how we grow as humans. And I think that we, we as a community are uniquely positioned to do some good in this world. And with that being said, I really appreciate Patagonia's model of 1% for the planet. Um, I don't know what the 1% of BJJ meditations and my consulting work that's related to it is going to be, if it's going to be for the planet or if it's going to be something for something else. But I'm here today to tell you that I am in on that mission. Um, BJJ meditations for the first time made money this month. I mean, <laughs> we're really, we're, this is a, this is a money bleeding endeavor. Um, I don't want to get into the, the specifics of it, but, uh, for the first time ever, somebody purchased one of the NFTs, whoever you are, thank you, uh, for $15. And that works out to like 0 0.08 Ethereum. So for whatever amount of money that comes in pre-tax here at BJJ Meditations, I'm about to start the formal process of forming this as a company, but one, at least 1% 1 of whatever comes in, you know, pre-tax will be going to some sort of charity. And I say at least because my goal is to make it uh, larger over time, um, as hopefully this endeavor becomes more successful. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. For those of you who don't have children, uh, the process transforms your thinking and your be your way of being perhaps more so than anything else you'll ever go through. And it's very easy to kind of think in terms of the immediate, but really we need to think, I think on at least a 100 year timeline here. This is about, Multiple generations. What can we do right now to help multiple generations, our children, our children's children? And I think it's going to be taking on this meta crisis. So with that out of the way, I want to read to you BJJ Meditations 31, which is probably why you actually came here. And this meditation is called Choosing to Win. How do we choose to win? Don't get me wrong. We must study. We must practice. We must train hard to build mental and physical toughness. But how do we train at making the decision to win when the moment arises? Because the time comes in every match when momentum shifts. Things were going our way, then they start to go in the opposite direction. That's when we must choose to win. We must choose to dig deeper into the reserves of our own creation. We must push through physical, mental, and spiritual pain to find a way toward victory. That's seldom easy, but it isn't impossible. So how do we do this? How do we train at choosing to win? So this meditation stems from a conversation I had yesterday with Emily Kwok, the, uh, one of the, the co-owner and founder of Princeton Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and Shane McCarthy, who is our amazing head coach, uh, Shane had just taken a bunch of students to a local competition and we were kind of, uh, conducting our usual feedback loop post competition triage to assess, okay, what do we need to focus more on? What do we need to maybe focus less on? What are we not seeing here? That's perhaps showing up in the results of the competition. And Shane made this amazing point about there's a moment, essentially what I just said in that meditation, that in every fight, there's a moment when we have to choose to win. It might be before you slap hands with your opponent. It might be just getting up that morning and getting out of bed. It might be a moment in the comp when things are about to slide in the opposite direction. Like I, I, I'll give you an example from my competitive experiences. Um, when I did the Atlanta open right before the world shut down in 2020, um, there was a moment in my second match, the match for the silver medal where, uh, I had this guy in my clothes guard, and I was just harassing him with a choke, which I couldn't quite get. And uh, I just decided I had to let it go. I had to choose another line of attack. Otherwise, I was going to get dinged for stalling. I might have even gotten dinged for stalling, which to me is kind of absurd because I was attacking. Um, so I opened the guard and it became a battle, I think, of me trying to get to X guard. I don't have footage of the match, unfortunately, because I was there alone. Um, and eventually he passed my guard and I wound up in side control. 
And there was a moment right then and there where I knew I had to decide to get out of side control. As miserable and awful as that position is, I had to dig deeper into something else, some some reserve, of, as I said in this meditation, of something deep and uh, affirming inside of me to get out. And I just knew there was nothing there. It was almost like I made a decision to lose in that moment. And it, it irritates me to this day because um, I remember I was online to get some food after the comp was over. I ended up with a bronze medal, um, a legit bronze medal, not like a thanks for showing up bronze medal. It's my one and only IBJJF medal. Uh, but I remember being online waiting to get some food and, and the this guy was behind me, the guy that I lost to in that silver medal match. And um, he was talking to his coach and they didn't realize that I was in front of me. And he was in disbelief that he had even won. He said, I, as soon as that guy grabbed my gi, I thought it was over. I didn't see any way of beating him. And I let that guy win. I, ch- I chose to lose in that match instead of choosing to win. I very easily could have beaten him. My jujitsu was better and he knew it. My conditioning was better and he knew it. But I lost. I, there's no one to blame. That guy didn't beat me. I beat me. And he knows it. And I know it. So... This raises the larger question in my mind of, okay, we need to choose to win. This is a principle. And this is something that uh, Emily and I work on a lot with some very influential, powerful people in our peak performance consulting business with Josh Waitzkin. This idea of being oriented toward principles, of being a principled person. You know, in this case, choosing to win is the principle. But how do you train at choosing to win? It's this big amorphous idea. You know, if I tell you, go train at choosing to win, uh, what the hell does that even look like? We can't train principles in isolation. We need to train habits that are manifestations of those principles. So this man, this meditation is really essentially at the heart of what this podcast and what BJJ Meditations is intended to be, right, from the get-go. This is my journal. Like, this came out of... <laughs> This meditation literally came out of this journal that I write in every single morning. Um, I edited it slightly and, and expanded it a little bit, but you're literally getting, I say we here, I'm really talking myself. You know, I, this is something that I know I need to work on. I need to work on it if I want to win at Masters Worlds. And I also need to work on it if I want to practice what I preach as a coach. Because first and foremost, I don't want to sit here and tell you what to do and not do it. I don't want to be an armchair professor. I don't want to be a philosophologist. I want to be a philosopher. So I am about this work, just as I'm sure you are about this work too. Um, So what we need to do to manifest this principle of choosing to win is creating habits. And I don't know, this is where things get sticky, right? Sticky and tricky. Because I firmly believe, as I said in my previous meditation um, about my conversation with Pat, who Pat, I'm sure, is annoyed that I haven't already posted a new episode this week. Sorry, Pat. Um, I think that our true north as as people who live lives of training and as jujitsu competitors has to be unique to who we are. It has to be true to our disposition. Uh, I can't be prescriptive. Like if we were working together in a coaching capacity, I would spend so much time observing you, simply getting to know you, asking you questions before I even made any kind of slight low touch intervention, because you really mess with these things at your peril, especially with high level performers. And a lot of times, as Josh likes to point out, a person's genius is highly entangled with their eccentricity. So if I go in, say, as a more conventional type of coach, and I try to correct something that I that I think is dysfunctional. I might be ruining you as a human, as a competitor. I might be trying to make you into something that you're not. I might be putting my shit on you. And how is that fair? So really, I say we need to create these habits. And I'm about to tell you some of the habits that I'm working on as a way of manifestation, manifesting this principle of choosing to win. But this is not a prescription. Uh, You really need to either work with someone who understands the necessity of listening and re- truly listening, 99.9% listening before they even make suggestions. Or you need to do that work of listening yourself. And um, I'm about to 
publish uh, a different style of episode. I'm working on the write-up of it now where I talk about all the different modalities I use around and in jujitsu to do that type of active listening, to really understand myself and to self-coach. Um, that's to come. But really, you either need to be about that or you have to have a coach who's extremely sensitive to these dynamics and, and can help you there. And Emily has certainly been like that to me. And um, I'm, I hope I'm starting to become like that toward other people too. Um, but so how do we train this habit of choosing to win? Um, one of the ways that I like to do it is completely unrelated to jujitsu. And it's this process that we use in the peak performance consulting space, uh, that Josh Waitzkin created called the MIQ process. And throughout the day, I have this other little notebook here where I'm constantly posing questions to myself. Uh, they could be relative to my work as a consultant, they could be relative to my writing, they could be relative to my jujitsu, they could be relative to my role as a husband, as a father. Really, the distinctions are purely semantic. All of these things feed into each other. There really is no separation between them. Um, and at the end of the day, I study, I just quickly glance over the questions and I identify like what's the most important one. My criteria for the most important one is which one of these questions has the most to do with all the other ones? Like what's the meta question here? And then I forget about it. I go to sleep. Hopefully I get eight to nine hours of sleep, which by the way, uh, with a small child, you can get eight to nine hours of sleep. <laughs> maybe that's another, maybe that's another episode, uh, I should do. Um, and then I journal on it first thing in the morning and, and my, uh, my Rodia web book that I just showed you here. Um, I'm a big fan of quality stationery and Rodia makes a really great journal. Uh, Rodia is not a sponsor of this podcast and, uh, maybe they will be someday. Who knows? I don't know if the French care about jujitsu as much as us Americans. Someone, uh, some Frenchman or woman in the audience is probably going to take umbrage with that. And, you know, I welcome it. Um, anyway. Yeah. So that's one of the ways I go about this process of training at choosing to win. I, I'm constantly looking for the gaps in my thinking that are leading to losses. Uh, and they could be losses on the mat. They could be losses in life, but there really is no separation between them. Um, that's sort of like a universal process that I think can be useful for everyone. I don't want to be too prescriptive, like I just said, but the, the form and function that that MIQ process takes can be however you wanted to do it. It could be purely in your head. It could be on a computer. It could be a combination of both. It could be on paper, excuse me. Um, but yeah, really, it can take whatever form you want it to. And I think that's essential. And then sort of the other habit I manifest is uh, intentionally training out of bad positions. There was uh, a couple of weeks after I went to Boston, where I had that amazing encounter with uh, Professor Gin Ginsburg from uh, Ginsburg BJJ, um, where he taught me about resetting the Zen point. And I took that technical approach and psychological approach to escaping mount and side control. And I just trained it over and over and over again, mostly with big blue belts and white belts. I would say, okay, we're going to, on Saturdays, I generally have an hour after I teach my class where I can train. And every single one of those rounds, it started from either the bottom of mount or the bottom of side control. And um, so much of it was practicing the technical aspects of getting out. And then another huge portion of it was just being okay with being miserable. Uh, and it pays dividends. You know, I, I went, uh, and I think like a week after I started doing this, I trained with m one of my uh, law enforcement colleagues at the school who is a very large and dangerous man who I've talked about on this podcast before. Um, and I did the same thing with him. <laughs> we trained for like a half hour straight with me just like getting crushed under his mount, uh, really pressure testing in the literal and the metaphorical sense, uh, the technical and the psychological aspects of this escape. And uh, it revealed a lot of the deficiencies in my strategy. I'll put it to you that way. But more so than anything else, it taught me that this, this is survivable. This too shall pass. Uh, so yeah, I, I chose to put myself into that situation and I, I chose to go through the painful process of running that feedback loop, assessing the failures and trying to course correct. And that's very much still a uh, work in progress. But anyway, those are two examples of how I'm training at manifestations of habits to take on this principle of choosing to win. Um, and, you know, in passing in this meditation, I talk about this idea of digging into reserves of our own creation. Uh, what are these? 
I think that this is really the deep psychological fortitude that comes from knowing that you have built up your resilience and knowing that you have built up your technical acumen to deal with almost anything. Uh, I really see this in big ways in Emily when I've asked her about her strategies for prepping for competition. And she always tends to say something along the lines of like, well, I know my game. I know what I want to do. And I have such confidence in that depth that I know that whatever the other person does, I'm going to have an answer for it. And I think that's sort of her reserve of her own creation. I don't really know what mine is yet. Uh, I think that mine, I think that I'm, I'm getting, I'm starting to get the sense that mine has something to do with establishing control, that even in disadvantageous positions, I can establish control, maybe in subtle ways that the person doesn't even realize. Maybe it just starts with a singular grip or something like that. Uh, but psychologically, there's a lot of ground for me to be gained there. And that's kind of where I'm, I'm putting my efforts right now as I dig deeper into this problem. But that's, again, something that you need to sort out for yourself. Like I, I can't really tell you what the proper manifestation of that principle is. You need to have it be aligned with who you are. Like maybe you're a tremendous counter puncher style of, of grappler. Uh, your approach is going to be much different from my sort of command and conquer, even in sort of more subtle or tricky way approach, uh, and it, me trying to tell you to roll like that is not going to be uh, constructive for you in any way. So I'm curious, I'll just, I'll close this episode by posing a question and saying, what habits are you using to manifest choosing to win? Uh, what, what are you doing? And uh, maybe I can steal some uh, ideas from you, or maybe we can steal some ideas from each other. You know, this is uh, one of my overall goals with this uh, whole endeavor is to have this be a repository of information that we can all use to to grow as a community but i think that goal transcends jujitsu just as the mission of bjj meditations transcends jujitsu uh and i just want to again revisit my commitment to uh one percent charities to be determined mission to be determined i need to think a bit more about this but um you have my promise that as i continue to grow bjj meditations there will be a uh, altruistic component to our mission that is aimed at solving or at least alleviating the meta crisis. Because uh, as Emily has said to me multiple times, truly complex problems, they aren't solved, they're managed. So how can we equip each other and how can we equip the world with the skills and the knowledge and the mindset to take on these problems? I think jujitsu is a wonderful place to start. So once again, just want to say thank you to whichever one of you purchased the NFT of the last episode. Um, there, are, Just so everyone knows there, I mint like 500 of every episode and they're all priced at 15 bucks a piece. So it's not like it's a one of one type thing. Um, any one of you can go and purchase up to 500 of these things if, you, if you're really so motivated. Um, and yeah, 1% of whatever the proceeds of that or any other money that comes in through this program, either from me coaching or what have you is going to go through that to that altruistic mission to be determined. Um, and you have my word on that. Uh, other than that, you know, read support on mirror, just, uh, like always, uh, don't really need to say any more about that. Just said a bunch about it. If you want to support the podcast, otherwise just like subscribe, review and share wherever you are listening or watching. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at BJJ excuse me, underscore meditations. Um, that's probably the best place to keep up to date with all happenings here. Um, I am going to be shifting things up a bit and building a proper website in the new, in the near future as I continue to scale this thing up. So more to come on that. Uh, the other big thing you can do is work with me. If all of, if what I'm saying speaks to you, uh, I'm here for you. You know, that's primarily what I'm doing these days for a living is coaching, consulting. And it's really um, what gets me out of bed in the morning. I love it. I love it because I learn from you. And I just love sharing what I've learned to hopefully help uh, make your life better. Um, if you're interested in that, the best way to get in touch with me is to email me. Uh, the email address is bjjmeditations at gmail.com. 
Um, if you enjoy my writing, check it out. Check me out on Substack. I've got a new Substack coming out this month or this week, rather. It's johannon.substack.com. And of course, uh, you're always welcome to come and train at Princeton Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. We welcome grapplers from all academies, all ranks, all walks of life. Uh, if you're a listener of the podcast, I would love to meet you and talk to you and hear what's on your mind. Uh, I teach a class now on Thursday nights. That's from 6.30 to, I believe it's 6.30 to 8. It's an advanced no-gi class that I team teach with Ryan Healy, one of our black belts. Ryan's also the front man of a really cool band called American Grimm. And I also teach on Saturdays. That class runs from 10.30 to 11.30 with an open mat afterward. Come through. Let's have a chat. Maybe get a beer afterwards. Uh, and let's learn from each other in the process. But thank you all. Uh, stay safe out there. Uh, it's going to be another wild summer. What can I say? Climate change is a mother. Uh, but I think there's really no reason to despair because I think we have what it takes to address these crises. It's kind of just crises. It's just kind of a matter of elevating consciousness to do it. And uh, hopefully BJJ Meditations and the community around it has a small part to play in that. Until next week, talk soon.